begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Good morning, you hooligans. Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. How you guys doing out there? And you gals. I'm always forgetting to say gals. You know, one of these days I'm going to get hit with the cancel culture where nobody wants to watch me because they're protesting. All that good news. But say it isn't so. Say it isn't so. Eddie Van Halen, man, passes away. At 65 years old. For you younger people. That were not around for the 80's. And the hair bands. Now that was a decade for some music. And right on top man. The best guitarist ever. Yeah. Eddie Van Halen baby. Uh, What a loss man. And it's funny. Growing up as a kid. You see all these bands and stuff. You know how live they are. Out there partying and stuff. And nothing's ever going to happen to them. Uh, Yeah, well, damn, man. This one was a heartbreaker. A complete heartbreaker. Couldn't believe it. Uh, He died of uh, throat cancer, I believe it was. And it was very interesting. And you might want to look at this, you know, you uh, guitarist. Uh, He said, well, there's a million possibilities of what happened. But he used to, you know, hold copper uh, guitar picks in his mouth and stuff. It could have been from anything, but that's one of the things that he said. But, damn, man, Van Halen, I guess my uh, favorite album had to be 5150. See, I'm a Sammy Hagar guy, man. You know, there's a lot of, there's that big debate that uh, Sammy Hagar or David Lee Roth. Nah, I'm Sammy, baby. Sammy Hagar is better than David Lee Roth ever was. You know, he was a has-been right away, if you ask me. So, yeah, sad state of affairs, man. Uh, Eddie Van Halen has uh, passed away, man. Sad state of affairs. Other news today. We uh, got some uh, hmm, interesting stuff coming out of uh, Texas. Right now they are debating, I guess at the appellate level, whether or not Abel Reyna, if you guys do not know who Abel Reyna is, you should... Because we covered that Waco Twin Peaks stuff forever when it was going on. Well, they are seeing if he cannot, you know, he has immunity from getting sued. And hopefully, hopefully, they rule he does not. Because what that guy put them people through is just freaking horrendous horrendous what was it over uh, 177 people got arrested just filling out their names and stuff on a a piece of paper next thing you know they're being held on one million dollars worth of uh bond money there man uh so that is going on that was a sad situation altogether that is the incident where nine people died. There's a lot of people injured. Uh, you know, many say, many say, you know, that four of the people that were uh, killed were killed by police officers, and nothing has ever happened to the cops. Personally, I don't think there was a big enough investigation by other authorities other than Waco and uh, the Texas people, man. Uh, but hey. As long as it's bikers dying, they don't really care. That's just what, you know, that's the sense that they're putting out there uh, with this kind of stuff. And it's sad because you have to look at it in today's terms. You know, that was, what, five years ago? Five years ago. And it was a lot. It seems like freaking decades ago, five years. But anyway, it is not as much in the news back then as it is now with all this police abuse and uh, you know what what happened that day at waco was abuse abuse of power they knew ahead of time that this could happen 
they had the informants, they had, uh, you know, all the information they needed. They show up early in the morning, set up, and they didn't do nothing. They could have stopped this. Instead, they let it happen. Next thing you know, people lost their lives. If uh, you ever look at some of the recordings of it or talk to anybody that was there, they were actually letting people die right there in the parking lot. Die right there. Nothing, uh, no help, no ambulances. I remember when we interviewed uh, Richard uh, Luther, I believe his name was. Uh, he passed away since, but he told the story of trying to help one of the guys who were bleeding out and the cops wouldn't let it happen. What kind of country do we live in where this kind of event takes place? Now, yeah, the clubs are at fault as well. I think they walked themselves right into this one. Uh, you know, it was a confederation meeting. Uh, another club showed up. Uh, that wasn't invited. There was problems going on between each other. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, a lot of the reports were that the Texas bottom rocker was at issue of the whole damn thing. And you got to sit back and think to yourself, uh, I'm going to play a little devil's advocate right now. The, t the bottom rocker of the MC uh, scene if you actually look at it, it has caused a lot of freaking death all over the United States. And you got to ask yourself why. Why would you want to put yourself in that type of position where a patch is going to either get you shot or it's going to get you killed? I'm talking about the bottom rocker. And we've seen that played out that day. See, uh, with Devil's Advocate, I try to play both sides. I might not freaking agree with what even I'm saying, but I try to, you know, bring to the conversation what other people are going to say because God knows when you look at them comments, oh my God. You know, so I guess I'm preempting their questions uh, when I play Devil's Advocate because it does get tiring because they, when they talk in the comment sections, they never put an argument down. Never. They only put up horse shit. You know, that's one of, one of the reasons I did that one video that had to do with uh, one guy saying, well, motorcycle clubs are a thing in the past or something like that was the video. And that's why I'm, you know, bringing up uh, the patch stuff because that's the next thing that's going to be said to me. Uh, it's like I can almost see what the haters are going to say at this point. But... They're going to bring that up. And one of their arguments are going to be is, well, you know, what I just said with the patch. Uh, why is it worth it? Blah, blah, blah. And these are usually the type of people that don't understand how the scene works. they never been in anything. So they don't know what that patch means to people. I get it. Ignorance. But that doesn't uh, make an excuse for you to go bash people that do believe in it you know what i'm saying uh you kind of get sick and tired of that type of stuff or it's just plain and simple it comes down to some of them guys uh making comments on the platform is it's leo you know because god forbid do we get trolled by leo <laughs> uh especially over on uh spotify and itunes uh some of the messages that they leave on the studio line is just screwed up and you can tell who the hell they are at that point in time so yeah we're going to be covering a lot of uh what's in the news as far as abel reyna also we're going to go over to australia yeah 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 we're going over to australia i kind of get uh you know amused at some of the stuff that goes on over there because it's like damn man that's not the scene that we have in the united states and I, as I always say, I always say this, there's different cultures, they do different things, they have, uh, what can I say, uh, they go by their culture, you know, like in Australia, they're called bikies, it's not called that here. Uh, they believe in different things and different goals than clubs do over here. 
that can same thing can be said is if you go over to Europe, they look at things differently than we do in the United States. I think that's what's really cool about this lifestyle is you got so much going on. You can never learn every damn thing, man. I, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and I don't even know every damn thing, man. Just let you know, put it that way. So let's go on to the news. Let's check it out. See what's going on today. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. This came over the courthouse news service. And it starts off by uh, the title of the article is Panel Here's Debate. Over immunity for ex-DA in a Texas shootout case by Saprina uh, Canfield. And if you don't know why he's the ex-DA, is because bikers got together and beat him by 20 points. Their candidate, their preferred candidate. And he was ousted from office. So that is why he's the ex-DA. Anyway, New Orleans. Uh, it looks like a Fifth Circuit panel. Uh, heard arguments Monday over whether the former district attorney in Waco, Texas, is entitled to qualified immunity for arrest made in the aftermath of the 2015 biker gang shootout that killed nine people. Now, as far as I understand, is qualified immunity is when you don't do nothing damn wrong. This guy, he was wrong. He was wrong big time, and he knows it. He knew what he was doing was wrong. All he was doing was trying to use this incident, like all politicians do, for political gain. You know, one day run for governor of Texas, something like that. So he needed something like this under his belt. Former McClellan County District Attorney Abel Reyna was sued in May of 2016 by several men who claim they are they and other uh, dozens others were rounded up and charged with cookie cutter felonies in what was one of the largest mass arrests ever in the United States over a single incident you heard that right the largest mass arrest ever in the United States over a single incident let that burn into your head if you ever see some of the Waco footage, you see a lot of people running away from the scene. And guess what? If they were wearing colors, they were arrested. Yeah, they were arrested for wearing them colors because, ooh, you're part of the gang. That's what they were doing to people. Reina's attorneys, Thomas Brandt, told the three Fifth Circuit judges Monday that because his client... Quote, didn't do any actual arresting. You're kidding me, right? You're the one that was telling them what to charge them with. Now, didn't do any actual arresting. You are the one behind it all. I hope to God the Fifth Circuit's not that stupid. He should be entitled to qualified immunity over the 192 arrests made. 192. That's his only defense was he didn't do any of the actual arresting. U.S. Uh, Circuit Judge Stefan uh, Higginson, a Barack Obama appointee. Edith Jones, a Reagan appointee. Well, maybe, you know, she might want to retire soon if she's all the way back by Reagan. Appeared to be on of entirely separate minds about the matter. Higginson suggests uh, for the warrants uh, for the arrest would ha never have been issued in the first place if all the facts were known in the case saying they were issued based on misinformation. 
Hmm, I like this Higginson guy. Certainly, you can never lie to a judge to obtain a warrant. But Jones said that considering uh, two of the men arrested at the Twin Peaks restaurant in Waco were there to deal judge or drugs, the case for Reyna's qualified immunity makes sense to me. Are, what? Nine people died there. Over 192 were arrested. And because uh, two men were there to deal drugs, uh, he ha that makes no damn sense whatsoever. What kind of argument is that? Quote, I was thinking of a variation of on Casablanca of uh, round up the usual suspects, Jones said. Brant apparently or appeared to mostly agree with Jones on the Casablanca metaphor, but added the difference in this case is that it was not the whole city, but only Rick's Cafe that had been infiltrated by gangsters. Higginson injected uh, that he was not sure the plaintiffs or other present at Twin Peaks at the time clearly belonged to street gangs. Attorney Don Tittle, representing the plaintiffs, said most of the nearly 200 people arrested were not affiliated with the Banditos or the Cossacks. Two motorcycle clubs identified as being on opposite sides of the shootout that left nine people dead and 18 others. Tittle said Reyna was the mastermind, and he was, behind charging everyone present with the same offense. Engaging in organized criminal activity when a legal arrest requires that every person be charged based on compelling facts and evidence and tried individually. Quote, if the defendants can prove that someone is in a gang and that they engaged in violence, Tuttle said, then and only then are they fair game for charges uh, to be brought against them. The fact that flash violence occurred has little to do with what the defendants have described as bikers descending on Waco, the attorney said. That's a great argument. As a result, he said his clients were sent to jail and charged with first-degree felonies without probable cause. The case being heard in the Fifth Circuit stems from the May uh, 17, uh, 2015 massacre outside of Twin Peaks. Around lunchtime, hundreds of biker enthusiasts gathered in the parking lot of the restaurant uh, where a biker coalition summit was being held. It's just a confederation meeting. Prior to the summit, local police officers heard that members from the two rival motorcycle clubs, the Banditos and Kazakh, might be present and showed up armed in large numbers in case of conflict. That's what I was talking about. They could have turned either one of them clubs around and not allowed them in there, and this wouldn't have happened. One of the Bandito motorcycles was either hit or nearly hit by a bike belonging to a Kazakh, and violence erupted for a brief minute or two. Armed with clubs, brass knuckles, baseball bats, knives, and handguns, the biker beat, stabbed, and shot at their rivals. Police officers opened fire on the scene, shooting at least four bikers. Well, there it is. They even say it. When the chaos subsided, nine bikers lay dead in the parking lot. Another 18 were wounded. Quote, in 34 years of law enforcement, this is the most violent crime scene I have ever been involved in. <laughs> Swanning, you schluck. Said in the statement at the time, there is blood everywhere. Well, you guys were responsible for four of them. Uh, police immediately rounded up and detained 239 people and bust them to the Waco Convention Center, which they turned into a temporary holding facility. Of those, 177 uh, men believed to be either banditos, Kazakhs, or supporters of one of the two clubs were arrested on the same charge of engaging in organized criminal activity. That's what they just said. 177 men believed to be either banditos, Kazakhs, or supporters of one of the two clubs. And they were arrested on the same charge. Without proof, none of that stuff. A first-degree felony that came with a sentence of 15 years to life.
A total of 192 people were eventually arrested. The first and only trial for Jacob Jake Carousel, president of the Dallas Banditos chapter, ended in a mistrial. The state eventually dropped all charges against those that who had been arrested. Uh, the civil case is now in the Fifth Circuit, was filed in 2016, but sat on the docket for two and a half years during a criminal investigation. In June, U.S. District Judge Alan Albright in the Western District of Texas ruled that the case cannot continue be, to be uh, stayed for defendants who are not arguing for qualified immunity. Higginson and Jones were joined on the panel by U.S. Circuit Judge Patrick uh, Higginbotham, another Reagan appointee. The judges did not indicate how or when they will rule on the issue. I say if they rule against you, put it in front of the whole court, man, instead of that. Because that's uh, hardcore BS right there. Uh, Casablanca. What the hell is wrong with you people? And, you know, that's one thing about judges that I'm going to bring up. Why the hell are they giving lifetime freaking appointments, man? I think... Judges on either side of the and personally, I don't think they should be allowed to be affiliated with any political party because at that point, they're not reading the law. They're judging on their party platform, if you ask me. So what the hell are you guys doing there for like 30, 40 years? You're like 90 years old, man. That gets tiring, Casablanca. You know, what kind of freaking BS is that? Well, the only defense that they got is, well, he didn't make the actual arrest. He's the one who coordinated them all. Come on, man. You know, hopefully this would go all the way to Supreme Court if, uh, you know, they don't get any uh, result from these lower courses, courts. That's just BS, man. Uh, out of the Queensland police news, yes, they got a police uh, uh, statement coming out. OMCG drug and firearm uh, seizures. Investigators from the Organized Crime Gangs Group have charged an alleged prospect. Here we go. Alleged prospect of the Mongols outlaw motorcycle gang with drug and weapon offenses following the execution of a search warrant at a Brown Plains residence. During the search of the residence on October 2nd, Police located and seized 1.3 kilograms of methamphetamine, 551 grams of cocaine, two handguns, a silencer, ammunition, and approximately 50000 in cash. A cash count in, uh, machine and Mongols OMCG clothing were also located and seized. This is very interesting here. You know, I don't know if that's the actual picture. But that's club stuff, and here they're saying alleged prospect. That made no sense, that picture in that one. A 25-year-old uh, Browns Plains man, uh, allegedly a prospect uh, of the Mongols OMCG, was arrested and charged with two counts of possession of a dangerous drug exceeding scheduled possession of Category H firearms. Possession of ammunition and pro, uh, possession of proceeds of crime. Detective Inspector Larissa Miller from the Organized Crime Gang Group said, This was a notable seizure, with the arrest reflecting the Queensland Police Service's commitment to pursuing OMCG driving crime. <laughs> You gotta love these press releases that these cops put out. OMCGs are motivated only by greed and profit. Their activities are interwoven with the illegal possession of firearms, drugs, and money, causing significant harm to our community. That's a blanket statement if I've ever heard one. They don't give any room, uh, you know, like I always say, a few do it, but they don't give any room for that. They say the whole thing is that. To those thinking about joining a gang, know that we are resolute in our commitment to disrupting and prosecuting members and associates now of OMCGSs and protecting the community from their criminal activities. 
Uh, the man appeared in Brisbane Magistrate uh, Court on October 3rd and was remanded in custody. So that out of, uh, and that is a, uh, a press release from the Queensland Police News. Now let's go over to New Jersey. And this one's kind of weird, man. Uh, dinner fight that turned deadly was because, and they got this in quote, Wawa Crew, Wawa Crew, <laughs> I've heard everything. Motorcycle Club cops say, and this was updated on the 6th, which is today. And it talks about a fight outside, and I covered this before. A fight outside an Ocean County diner that led to a man's death was sparked by an argument over the victim's friend being kicked out of a motorcycle club called the Wawa Crew. Okay, I just got to ask, where the hell did you come up with that name, man? I just got to ask, I'm asking, you know, the, you know, I'm interested. What the hell, did you, wah, wah? Come on. Uh, Edward uh, Chandler, 54, uh, is charged with aggravated manslaughter in the death of Robert Clark, 78. Yeah, 78, you punched a guy who was 78. I ain't even. After he punched Clark during an argument outside the Lakeside Diner in Lacey Township, causing Clark to fall, hit his head, and later die. The incident began after Clark arrived at the diner to eat with a female friend for a birthday celebration, according to the affidavit of Pras Bobo Cause. At the diner, Clark's friend stated an ar started an argument with the leaders of the motorcycle club called the Wawa Crew. <laughs> I can't get over that. Wawa? Over her being kicked out of the group. The owner of the diner told those involved in the argument to leave the restaurant and another verbal fight started in the dining uh, parking lot. During the fight, Clark was walking toward one of the leaders of the motorcycle club and Chandler told police he heard someone yell knife, so he punched Clark in the face, according to the affidavit. Uh, Chandler admitted to striking the victim one time in the face and heard someone yell knife. He admitted that he did not see a knife when he struck him. Uh, he was flown unconscious to a Jersey Shore Medical Center and died about six hours later. Uh, the post-mortem uh, examination of Clark found his cause of death to be a closed head injury secondary to fall and the manner of death to be homicide, the affidavit said. Uh, the diner where the assault occurred was cited numerous times in August for violating Governor Phil Murphy's executive order Banning indoor dining. That's going to get that diner going even more. Uh, man. Uh, Corey Graff's Wall of Shame from NBCNews.com. Take it with a grain of salt, all I can tell you from this one. Uh, from the news agency is what I'm talking about. The Texas Department of Public Safety said that a preliminary investigation indicates the officer's action were not objectively uh, reasonable. Oh my God, here we go. Let's see what we have here. Tonight, the first step in a Texas family's plea for justice. My son didn't deserve this. He helped everybody in this community. Jonathan Price's mother today, after hearing the police officer who shot and killed her son Saturday night was arrested and is now charged with murder. Mr. Price was unarmed. He was non-aggressive and he had his hands up. Witnesses say Price was trying to break up a domestic dispute at a gas station. Tonight, the Texas Ranger shedding new light on the fatal encounter, saying in a statement, Officer Lucas attempted to detain Price, who resisted in a non-threatening posture and began walking away. Investigators confirm witness accounts of what happened next, saying Lucas deployed his taser on Price in this gas station parking lot, then drew his service weapon firing on Price, who died in a nearby hospital. The Rangers say their preliminary investigation shows the actions of Officer Lucas were not objectionably reasonable. The district attorney not commenting on the facts of the case amid the ongoing investigation. Support for the family now pouring into this small town. Hundreds gathering last night to honor Jonathan's life with peaceful calls for justice. Price described as a pillar of his community. The, third the guy gets shot because he's trying to break up a fight between a man and a woman. Unfreaking real, man. Unfreaking real. Uh, let's see here. What we got is uh, the president of the Hellfighters Motorcycle uh, 
Ministry in Jackson is killed in a crash. Sad state of affairs right there. Uh, Richie Jones was a big teddy bear call, uh, Chad Miley tells me, during a telephone call. And this is by Biker Dad. Just a few days after his friend died in a motorcycle crash on a Mississippi highway. Jones was like many of us bikers. Looked like one of the big bearded stereotype characters of Hollywood biker movies. But on the inside... He wasn't the tough guy, he was a nice guy and a common theme in the real world of the motorcycle community, but beyond that, they seemed to be nothing uh, common about Jones. Uh, you know, sad stuff, man, sad stuff. Uh, Hellfighters International, with both deep sadness and great joy, we'd like to share that this morning, October 5th, Richard uh, Hedrick, our beloved founder of the Hell's uh, Fighters Christian Ministries Mission at the Cross and Hell Fighters USA Motorcycle Shop has gone home to be with the Lord. In sadness because of our time was short, but in the joy because he was forever free. This guy seems like a real cool guy, man. Let's play a little bit of his video here if it comes popping up here. Butter Richie from Jackson Unit. Uh, we are practicing the coronavirus protocols of not congregating in groups of 10 or more. We elected to not have our monthly meeting this month so that we would not germinate each other. So, But we had a couple of guys that were getting patches this month and we decided uh, it'd be best to go ahead and do that and take care of it. So we're filming it, putting it on an app we all use where we talk every day, encouraging each other and whatnot. So I have prospect Ted Alexander with me. He is a servant of God. He already has his bottom rocker. He is receiving his top rocker today. So I just want to present that to you, brother. Thank you so much. Love you, man. Love you. Absolutely. I got one more surprise for you. Uh -oh. We talked a few months ago. You had had a pretty successful prison ministry visit, and we talked about uh, that it was uh, a lot of the men were receptive of what you were saying and the gospel you were bringing. And that we talked that day about that you were the biggest tool in God's toolbox that night. And we said, yeah, you're like the hammer. So <laughs> I am now giving you the official road name. Oh, no, that's awesome, hey, man. That guy seems like man. a real cool guy, man. He really does. Our uh, condolences go out to the Hellfighters, his family, and friends. You know, he seemed like a really cool guy, man, just from watching that video. Let's China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Okay, welcome back to the show. You know what? I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around that statement where that judge who was appointed in the Reagan days, that's like 50 years ago or something like no, that. Not that long. You know, maybe, what, 40 years maybe? I don't know. Anyway, how could she say about Casablanca? Because two people were there to deal drugs that entitled the cops to arrest over 198 people? How is that even logical? You know, I get it. Republican judges, again, and I don't believe that judges should be a, a, they shouldn't be allowed to be a part of a political party. That is not just as being blind. No, that's taking a tilt from one party or another. But how could you even, there's no logic I, that blows me away. In this country, you're supposed to have evidence before you charge somebody with a crime. So two people were there to do drug deals or whatever, or what they ever did freaking claiming. And that gives them the reason to arrest everybody. And that his freaking defense, Abel Reyna's defense is, while he wasn't the one actually doing the arresting, who falls for that type of argument? I really don't get it. I'd like to see the political ties between these judges and Abel Reyna's family. Because his family has a lot of freaking uh, political connections. This shouldn't happen in the United States. What happened to them people was they lost their jobs. They've lost families over it. Yeah, I heard the stories, man. It was hell on earth. 
for those people that had to go through all this stuff. And for this prick to stand up there and try to use that as a defense is just god-awful and un-American if you ask me. Don't you get sick and tired of hearing about this qualified immunity crap when these officials go out and abuse their damn power? Look what's going on all over this country right now. Some of it's uh, justifiable, but most of it isn't. We just covered that one video of the cop hog tying abroad in the back of a freaking police car. Come on, man, they're on a power trip. They got this God complex crap going on. And they especially had it that day in 2015. They had the God complex. They thought it was all right to go ahead and shoot four people. They were not. They weren't protecting nobody. Who are they kidding? And it even says in the article, they finally admit it that they knew that this all could go down. So why the hell didn't you stop it? Ain't that your job as cops to uh, protect and serve? If you had actionable intelligence to go on that this could happen, then why did you let it happen? Oh, don't give me, well, you have a right to assemble. Okay, you're going to throw that up now? As you're tearing down every other constitutional right them people had there. I believe it came out that there was a, a form that all they had to do was put the people's names in there that were being arrested. One million dollar bonds and charging people with a crime that could have got them 15 to life. Think about that for a minute. 15 to life. And you see a lot of the people running away from the scene. All they wanted to do was get away from the scene, not be involved. But here they are charged with the freaking uh, crime. They can get them life imprisonment. And this cocksucker over here says, well, you know, I should have qualified immunity because I wasn't the actual one arresting him. You're, you know what? That's such a joke. And for the and those judges to see anything otherwise, you know what? You shouldn't even have a damn robe on. Because know this. The people of this country are sick and tired. Sick and tired of these officials running wild, man. They put their pants on the same way every one of us do. Enough's enough, for Christ's sakes. We'll have more updates when uh, we get a decision out of them. Again, they didn't say when. They'll probably use COVID to say, uh, you know, we can't meet, uh, blah, 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 blah. You know how it goes, man. You know how it goes. So, you know, really, that's the only thought I had uh, on this show because that really freaking bugged the hell out of me. Uh, for that kind of defense and for a judge to say something like that, the rights were freaking blown out of the water, man. You're judges, you're supposed to freaking read the Constitution, and you're supposed to go by that. Screw your personal thoughts, man. Uh, people are so tired of judges putting their thoughts in the cases. No, you're there to judge the law, not your personal crap. Anyway, with that, I will talk to you guys later, and I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Don't forget to go over to Hollywood and China Dial's channel. We got some great topics going on there Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Also, our standalone video blogs, man, uh, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sundays, and same drops for me on my uh, channel. So I'll catch you guys later.